Hello friends, my name is Real Meal and welcome back to some more Gran Turismo 2. Today we are continuing on with our Let's Play. This is episode 9 and in today's episode we are going to be tackling the Roadster Cop. So for that we need a convertible car and for that we're going to go to the North City, we're going to head over to Lotus and we're going to purchase one of my all time favourite convertible cars, a car which I am actually... I would kind of like to own at some point in my life, but I don't know if I'll ever be able to. Another course is the Alan S2. Yeah, this car. Uh, the one that no one remembers because I believe this was sold as many different things. It had an Isuzu engine, it was front wheel drive, and yeah, not many people remember it, um, but I really do kind of like the way it looks. And I've always, you know, I've always kind of liked this car. I'd rather own this over an MX-5 I think, just because it is a little bit more interesting, it is a little bit more left field. Now what's actually the horsepower limit for the Roadster Cup, and more to the point of it, what's its actual name because I've completely forgotten, it is the oh, World Open Car Cup, there you go. Okay so 246, 345, 591 horsepower, uh, we might find a different car for the last race just because that's ridiculous. Uh, but 246 horsepower in the 345 horsepower race, I think that said, uh, we can do them no problem. Uh, is there any racing modification? I don't think there is. No, there is not. That's a damn shame. Um, unfortunately, there is a one-make race with a lands, uh, but that does mean we can't use uh, this a land for that one-make race. Uh, one-make races, I'm going to be doing them later on in the Let's Plays. I'm actually kind of looking forward to them uh, because they're a bit interesting. You can see all the different cars and everything. Um, yeah, they'll be a bit later on. I'm gonna get through all of the special events first in this Let's Play, and then after that, I'm not really sure uh, what I'm gonna go on to. Eventually, the plan is to complete everything in the game. Uh, I would even like to uh, do the rally events now that I think about it. Uh, before, I wasn't too sure on them. I think I'm gonna do them now. I think that's definitely gonna be something that's much later on. Can we stick a turbo on this? Yes, we can. Uh, we can only get a stage 2 turbo. That's a bit of a shame. Um, I believe these cars are naturally aspirated from standard 1.8 litre Isuzu engines. Uh, bring out about 130 brake horsepower. Now, the Alan S2, this car could have been successful if it didn't come out when it did. And it came out one year after the Mazda MX-5 Miata came out. And this car, uh, compared to the Miata, no one really bought this car. No one really liked it because it was front wheel drive and... Uh, so on and so on, which is a bit of a shame. Like I said, I've always liked the Alan just because it's something a bit left field It's a bit different and I, I kind of like it for that. Anyway, we're sticking uh, 230 horsepower into it um, So yeah, 230 horsepower. I'm gonna put it on super softs um, I'm definitely gonna be able to get through the first two races I'm not sure about the last race yet, but either way our first race is at Tahiti Road. Okay, so here we are at Tahiti Road for the first race of the World Open Car Cup. And quite frankly, it looks like this is going to be a bit of a blowover because, well, there's lots of um, cars which just simply can't compete with my car on a performance level. There's a Lotus Elise, a Honda Beat, a, another Lotus Elan, an older one, a MRS, and I believe that's a Suzuki Cappuccino, or Cappuccino, whatever you want to call it, whatever that thing is. Uh, the Alan straight away, it definitely feels front wheel drive, I will give it that. Um, I was actually deciding for this episode between a MX-5 um, NB, an NB Miata or the Lotus Alan. I ended up going with the Alan, uh, just because I actually remembered this car at the last minute. Um, which, yeah, I did want to use this in a Let's Play at some point, just because I really do like this car, and I believe this is the only game where this car actually even shows up in. Um, many people do forget these exist. I believe they are starting to come up in price in real life, though. Uh, last time I had a look at them, they were about £3,000 for a decent-ish one. Although, of course, being a Lotus, uh, it won't stay decent for very long. Um, but they are starting to come down in price, which is, oh sorry, come up in price, which is nice, because I kind of want to see these things uh, get remembered for being a bit of a classic. Sure, they didn't really have the uh, pedigree or the, repu or the reputation or anything like that, and, you know, I think 
will it ever be remembered, you know, 30 years from now? Probably not. I mean, hell, 25 years on, most people don't remember these bloody things. Uh, but I do. Yeah, not really sure how long they made them for. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't an... What did they sell this? I'm fairly certain in South Korea this got sold as, like, the Kira Lan. Or something stupid like that. Uh, because, yeah, this was uh, tough times for Lotus. I believe this was before they got bought out or while it was owned by Isuzu. I think Isuzu owned them at some point, uh, which is kind of why this car came about. Uh, they kind of hoped it would kickstart sales of uh, Lotuses and bring the brand back up, but it uh, didn't really happen because, as I said, the MX-5 came out. And apparently my phone is very close to me. I apologise for that. Um, yeah, unfortunately the MX-5 came out just as this car did. And the MX-5 is much better regarded uh, than this vehicle, so unfortunately Lotus didn't get its sort of big resurrection, I guess, uh, until the Elise came out uh, six years later, which is a bit of a shame. Anyway, the land in that race, um, the cars were keeping a bit hot on my tail. Uh, the Lotus Elise came in second, Capsino in third, MR2 in fourth, Lotus Land S2 in fifth. And the Honda Beat came last, 5.5 seconds behind everything else. Because of course it did. Right, anyways, we got 7,000 credits for that race. And we've a lot new car. Let's go and see what it is. Okay, let's head over to the garage and see what we have won. The answer is... We have got a... Master MX-5! Okay, uh, it's the A-Spec model, so it's got a bit of a strange body kit thing going on with it. I kind of like it, but at the same time it's very, very weird looking. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll keep it about, which is because I think it looks absolutely hilarious, but... Uh, there are several tuned versions of the MX-5 in this game, and I hope to collect uh, some of the other ones, because they are much better looking. Anyway, we head on to our next race, which is at Grindelwald. Okay, we are on track at Grindelwald, and we have a PT Spider, a Mercedes SLK 320, a... Um, I'm not sure what that is, I'm going to have to get closer to it. I have just remembered one car I can use for the last race in this. Oh yes. Uh, yeah, so the 591 horsepower race, I'm not going to be using the Elan, uh, because I've just thought of something better. Um, well, yeah, I, I, you know what, I, I can't lie, it is better than the Elan. Anyway, what is it? Oh, it's an Alpha GTV Spider. It kind of looked like a TVR from uh, up high. That better not be an AZ1. I'm fairly certain an AZ1 isn't a convertible. Um, oh, another car that was in consideration for this episode now that, while I remember it. Uh, was the Honda S2000, although the car I've just thought of using for the last race, uh, I, oh sorry, the S2000, yeah, that was a car in consideration for this episode, uh, the car I've just thought of using for the next race, that has only just popped into my head when I thought that looked like something that it wasn't, uh, so yeah, um, <laughs> you probably already know what it's going to be, but, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say anything, is this car 5 speed? Yeah, it is 5 speed only. Uh, and what's this green thing? It is an Elise. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, the Elise is technically a convertible. You know, some people call it uh, one of those British sports cars. I wouldn't really... I mean, I don't know what we should call the Elise, really. Sure, it's a sports car, but eh, it's kind of like a low-end supercar at the same time. I mean, it gets the same sort of looks that a supercar uh, would get. Especially around here, I mean, I've seen a couple of Lotus Elises in real life. There's actually a Series 1 in uh, bright yellow, uh, which I'm, I haven't seen it in a while, but uh, it is around my area. And it's owned by someone who, she kind of looks like a lawyer. Um, yeah, that, that car's definitely a cool thing to look at. It's pretty amazing. But, I mean, you know, people will class the Lotus Elan here as a British sports car, and is it in the same class as the Elise? Eh, not really. Um, I don't know, I wouldn't really class the Elise as a roadster, either, to be honest with you. I mean, sure, it is an open-top car, but then, again, so is a Koenigsegg. And you don't call a Koenigsegg a roadster, do you? Or, like, do Koenigsegg still have the retractable roof? I'm not sure. 
I know some of them do. Um, I know the 1-1 one one does not. I remember reading that in the uh, Wikipedia article when I was doing uh, my research for 1-1. One one. So maybe the Aguera has the lift-out roof. Uh, I'm not too sure. Either way, uh, we're doing fairly well in this race. I did get a little bit worried. Um, it seems through the first half of the truck, my Alan is a little bit slower. Uh, but as soon as we move on to the sort of medium speed, high speed corners, uh, my Alan is much quicker than their vehicles. So, we are going to take a actually surprisingly easy win here at Grindelwald. We are actually quite a lot um, quicker than we were in the last race, apparently, uh, because two seconds behind us was the Lotus Lease instead of one second this time. Uh, Honda S2000 in third, PT Spider in fifth, oh, in fourth, sorry. Alpha Spider in 5th, Mercedes CL SLK <laughs> in 6th, Jesus. Uh, I apologise, I'm, I'm somewhat tired, I don't know if you can tell. Uh, I did actually sleep very briefly before recording this episode. Uh, but I figured, you know, I wanted to play some Gran Turismo 2, so we'd play some Gran Turismo 2. Anyways, I've won a prize car, so let us go and see what we have achieved. One, sure. Um... I don't really know what we could get. I I should really... I don't know if I should look at the prize cars or not, because then I can act genuinely surprised uh, when I win stuff. Anyway, we have won a MRS show version 97. Oh, it's the uh, concept car. Huh. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I actually kind of like it, uh, so we'll leave it in the garage for now. Um, again, as I said in the last episode, uh, I haven't really got much reason to get rid of cars other than to sort of keep my garage cluttered at the moment so yeah it'll probably go but when I get rid of it it'll be off camera anyway we are gonna need a new car for the next race and that means we are gonna go to TVR and we are gonna buy us a convertible now ooh, I'm thinking a Griffith right the Blackpool B340 335 horsepower in that how much is the 500 it's a bit cheaper to buy it has more power Sorry, we're going for the Griffith 500 then. Why would you go for the Blackpool? I, I don't understand. Anyways, because uh, we've bought a TVR, one thing we definitely need is tyres. Another thing we definitely need is uh, nerves of steel and maybe more power because, you know, I'm that person who adds more power to a TVR because of course. All right. Also, yeah, you may notice I've got a bit more money than last time. Uh, can we stick turbo? No, we can't. I assume it'll be an NA tune-up. Yeah, we've got a bit more money than the last time I did some grinding off screen with the uh, GT40 in the mid engined uh, race thing again uh, to bring in some more money. So, yeah, uh, that's why we've got a bit more money. Anyway, I'm going to shove the computer on here and I'm also going to shove the muffler in here. And then I think that'll be about it for my Griffith. Right. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm putting a bit too much power in this. I don't think the race is going to be nearly this difficult. Um, but still, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry, I guess. All right, and just as a quick thing, does this vehicle have racing modification? I do believe it does. Yes, it does. There you go. There's the racing modification for the Griffith. It actually turns the entire rear end around of the car, which is pretty strange. Anyways, let us head over to the World Open Car Cup. The, such a stupid name for it. Why can't it just be World Roadster Cup or something like that? Anyways, we head over to the last race, which is at Trial Mountain. Take three. This TVR is not fun to drive, as it turns out. It seems to want to spin out at the most inopportune moments. Anyway, in this race, we have a Dodge Viper, a Shelby Cobra, a TVR Tuscan Speed 6, because apparently that's a convertible, uh, an Aston Martin DB7 Volante, and I believe that's another Speed 6. Uh, it's purple, I'm assuming it's a Speed 6. No TVRs um, race this time around, which is a bit surprising. Um, essentially, this event's just been full of TVRs uh, for the most part. Yeah, these Speed 6s, they, I'm fairly certain they are not convertibles. I don't know why they are in this race, but they are, so yeah. Uh, to be fair, if they're doing that, why couldn't I bring a Cerbera? I mean, come on. Uh, Gran Turismo, get your crap together. But then again, whatever. Um, so the Speed Sixes are the ones to watch in this event. They are pretty damn quick. Uh, the Viper, surprisingly, is not. Uh, the Vipers are always behind the uh, back of the field for whatever reason. Like even the AC Cobra. Uh, oh my god. 
there we go, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I've been having issues through that corner, I've also been having issues uh, through the start of the lap, similar to the sort of issues I had with the Puma, but this time I'm having them in a 500 horsepower rear wheel drive TVR, so uh, yeah. As far as the actual handling is vehicle, understeery, then all of a sudden, sudden oversteer, and then you spin out. Essentially, that's uh, that's how the uh, handling goes on the uh, TVR Griffith, but there you go. Oh, there we go, two wheels action is fine. Uh, got a bit of a healthier lead this time around, which is nice. Right, I'm not going to clip that curb. I'm not going to go wide there. There we go. I think that's about the first time in this Let's Play I've actually... Oh, wait. No, spoken too soon. No, no, don't... Oh, for Christ's sake. Not again. Come on, get your crap together. Let's go. What's in last? Oh, it's the DB7. Of course it is. <laughs> DB7 Volante, nice car, not a quick car. Uh, I'm going to use the DB7 at some point because I really do like the DB7. One of my favourite Aston Martins, but uh, yeah, uh, not in this event, no chance. Although, to be fair, I will probably switch to something else if this event does not go well. I am in, like, there's nothing really much more I can do to this, uh, save for any bloody uh, race modifier. Can you get out my way, Shelby? Thanks. it would be really appreciative if you could do that. Of course, the two TVRs are um, right up towards the front. Let's see if they uh, cashed in on their uh, yellow older brother uh, coming in for the kill. Uh, speed 6, get out my way. Um, your car sucks. I'm not a huge fan of the Tuscan, to be honest with you. I even... These Tuscans, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, the Tuscan 2 is a little bit better, but these ones, no. They're ugly, ugly cars. Right. And brake, and no, don't. Uh, <laughs> I could feel it going there, but I think I'm going to win this race. Yes, I am, finally. Whoop, whoop. I better get a decent prize car. Yeah, for all of this. Anyway, the Griffith came in first, the two TVRs were in second and third, Shelby Cobra in fourth, Viper in fifth, and the DB7 Volante was five. <laughs> was a ridiculous um, time behind everyone else. Uh, yeah, don't bring a DB7 Volante to the uh, World Open Car Cup thing. Uh, top gear, top tip there. Right, anyway, we get 15 grand and we get a new car acquired. Let's go and see what our new car is. Okay, let's head over to the garage and see what we have got. Hopefully it's something worth the money. It's a concept car LM edition. Um, okay, um, it looks kind of cool. It's got a silly, silly wing on it. Um, I would have rather have used that in that last race. I'm sure that handles better than my Griffith Duffs. Um, but there, uh, anyway. Uh, that is the World Open Car Cup done, finally. Uh, and in the next episode, we will move on to something else. So yeah, hopefully you join me for that. Anyways, friends, my name's been The Real Emil. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.